Hello, my name is Kevin Gard, and I'm speaking to you from Drexel University's Running Performance and Research Center. And what I'd like to share with you today is 10 tips for your run down Broad Street. The Broad Street Run, as you probably know, is a 10-mile race that runs right down the middle of Philadelphia. It's considered one of the best 10-mile races for a number of reasons, mostly because it's a net down downhill race, and therefore it's considered one of the fastest races, fastest 10-mile race uh, in the country. Um, so a couple tips that uh, might help you uh, actually with your preparation for the race itself, as well as your time while running. The first of which what I want to address is uh, related to your taper. A taper is a sort of rest period that everyone does uh, prior to any race. And the idea behind the, the taper is to really uh, restore yourself, to return your glycogen stores back to your body so that by the time you get to the starting line, you are ready to run at your uh, full potential. What the taper shouldn't be is a time for you to catch up on your training. So many people think, oh, I, I didn't do as many training runs as what I should have done, or I didn't run as far as what I should have done, and they try and make up time during then. That's a bad strategy, because again, you want your taper to be that time where you can rest and, and restore all your glycogen stores. Uh, the length of your taper really is variable. For shorter races, the taper is, is shorter. So if, for races like full marathons, oftentimes people will taper for a full uh, three weeks. For a race of 10 miles or so, a one to two week taper is uh, appropriate, okay? And during that taper uh, time, it doesn't mean that you're not running at all, it just means that you're running less. So uh, generally what you try and do is decrease the volume that you'll, you'll, um, you'll run. So perhaps you decrease it in the first week by 10 to 20%, and then in the second week, decrease it by an additional 10 to 20%. With the last week before the race, the longest, a uh, run that you'll perform perhaps the weekend before the race would be seven miles and then the few days before the race what you just do is run a couple very short runs maybe two or three miles at a quicker pace just to keep your legs loose and ready to go. I generally like to have my last run before a race be the Thursday before the race so Broad Street is run on Sunday so you, you would your last run would actually be on that Thursday and then Friday and Saturday you take off and be ready to go uh, on uh, Sunday. If you are doing some strength training, you should taper that as well. So again, just like with your running, you want to decrease the volume of the strength training you're doing for the two weeks before the race, and you want to do no strength training five to seven days or so before the race itself. All right. Uh, directly the day before the race, you want to try and stay off your feet as much as possible. Really try and rest and hydrate yourself uh, during that day. And realize during this taper time, that a lot of people report increased aches and pains during, during this rest time. That's perfectly normal. It'll make you nervous and think that there's something wrong. But uh, it is perfectly normal to feel those um, little aches and pains. And it's oftentimes very normal to sort of feel like you're going stir crazy because for weeks before this, you've been running like crazy, burning a lot of energy, and all of a sudden that has dramatically decreased. So just realize that those are all normal feelings before the race. And instead, concentrate your, your feelings on spending time with your family and friends, uh, you know, catching up on that book that you didn't read because you were busy running, watching TV shows, those sorts of things to, to uh, try and occupy your time. Uh, the second tip that I have for you is, is related to just your dress during uh, the race itself. Uh, over the course of history with the Broad Street Run, the temperature range has been anywhere from 71 degrees, which is relatively warm, obviously, to uh, 51 degrees. Okay, That's the average temperature range in there. Obviously, we've had some times where it's been much colder than that, and we've even had a time uh, during the history of the Broad Street Run where it was 91 degrees. Uh, but the average is between that 71 to 51, so you should dress appropriately for that, realizing that it'll be a little bit cool at the start, and then you'll, as you run and warm up, and as the day warms up, you'll, you know, you'll get warmer and warmer. So oftentimes it's helpful to dress in layers in clothes that you don't care a whole lot about so that you can discard them as you race. So if you have a couple shirts on, you can pull one shirt off, throw it to the side. There are charity organizations that will come by, pick those clothes up, and then donate them to uh, people in need. Uh, the other thing that you want to think about with your apparel is that you don't want to wear anything new on race day. Okay? It's, uh, the race day is not a time to try out new clothing, new shoes, new socks. 
you want to have tested all of these items before you actually get to the race day itself because oftentimes you don't know how you're going to react to those clothing. You know, new, new socks and that sort of thing may create blisters and you don't want that to happen on uh, race day itself. And the big no-no is do not wear the Broad Street uh, Run shirt that's given to you at the expo itself. Again, you didn't train in that shirt, so there's no reason you should be wearing it on that day because you don't know how that shirt may chafe you and, and that sort of thing. Third tip that I have for you is related to goal setting. For any race, I recommend runners uh, create three goals for themselves. The first goal would be the best result. The, the, you know, if everything went really well, the weather was nice, you felt great, you know, what would be the time that you would feel really, really good about? So that would be kind of a stretch goal, if you would. Um, the second goal would be kind of an okay result, that things didn't go perfectly or they didn't go, go the best possible, but they went okay. And then the third goal would be one of those uh, goals that you'd use if the wheels just completely came off. So it was pouring rain that day, or it was really, really cold, or for some reason you ate something the night before that didn't agree with you, and you, you had an off day. Um, so it's helpful a lot of times so at, to have those three goals so that as you're running, you can kind of adjust to those goals and mentally be prepared for um, what you're experiencing. And the biggest thing around goals and that sort of thing is to be flexible. Realize that one of the, the cruel things about the sport of running is that things don't always go perfectly. Your training can go really, really well, but on that particular day, you may not just run well. So you gotta be flexible and adaptable uh, on race day so that um, things can go as best as possible. The uh, fourth tip that I have for you is just relative to the course itself. It's one of the most basic courses um, of any race that I've seen in that the entire race itself stays on Broad Street. So you start at Central High School in North Philadelphia. You run straight down Broad Street all the way to the Navy Yard. So if you ever find yourself on a street that's not named Broad Street, you have taken a wrong turn and you need to turn around and head back to Broad Street so that uh, you can get back on, on course. There are two basic turns on the course. And those are basically to go around City Hall itself, but you still say on Broad Street, so it's just a quick right turn, quick left turn to get back onto Broad Street, and then um, you're on your way. Uh, my fifth tip is really about following your routine. So your training as you're getting ready for Broad Street is all about routine. So the number of miles that you run, the clothing that you wear, what you eat, what sort of pace you're uh, maintaining while you run. And your race itself should be, uh, should mirror that training, okay? So you shouldn't try on race day, all of a sudden try all sorts of new things, okay? It should really mimic the training that you, you did. So um, if you ran a certain pace during your training, you should try and mimic that pace on race day. I already mentioned clothing. You, you trained in certain clothing, you should wear that clothing. Um, during your training, you should try out uh, different things that you might eat during the race. So whether or not you're going to eat goos or gels or you're going to drink Gatorade or water, you should be trying all those things during your training so these things aren't new to you on the race and then you just replicate those things uh, during the race itself. My sixth tip is around uh, being injured. So a lot of times when people are training for races of this length, they'll encounter some injuries and that sort of stuff. And oftentimes those people will carry those injuries actually into the race itself. So my tip to you would be is that if you do feel injured, so you have aches and pains that are lasting for days and days, or perhaps inhibiting you to run, or uh, creating, uh, making you limp while you run, or changing your form while you run, the best advice I can give you is to see someone who specializes in running injuries as soon as possible. Because oftentimes there's little tricks that they may be able to use to help you get over those injuries quickly. So it may be exercises that they may give you. There may be braces, tapes. They may have um, certain changes they can make to your running form that will help you get past those injuries so that you can actually race on race day, okay? In addition, if your injury does continue to linger or perhaps gets worse as you train, you may have to make a decision on whether or not you can actually race that day. And this happens to almost every runner at some point where um, you sustain an injury that just won't allow you to race on, on that day. And although that's disappointing, there are a lot of races throughout the year. There'll be other Broad Street runs and stuff, and you may just have to delay your running of the Broad Street until um, the following year. If during the race itself you encounter an injury, realize that there are medical personnel and medical tents on the course itself. 
so that you can get help that might involve just stopping real quickly to get uh, a little bit of assistance and then being able to continue running or if your injury is serious enough and you actually have to stop running uh, you can do that as well. The seventh tip that I have for you is just relative to crowd control. Realize at the very beginning of the race uh, there's a lot of chaos. It's a lot of people trying to start the race all at once and the real danger here is that um, there are a lot of tripping hazards. So there are a lot of feet and extremities that you can trip over. As well, I've seen people trip over potholes or curbs or medians and that sort of thing. So you really have to be careful at the very beginning of the race that you don't get tangled up amongst people. Gradually, as the race continues on and you get down uh, closer to City Hall, which is about the five mile mark, the crowd will start spreading out and uh, it's not, crowd control isn't as much of an issue. Um, as you start getting towards the finish line itself, oftentimes things become a little bit more congested there. Or what you also run into is people start to sprint. So you start getting people who are trying to move much more quickly, perhaps dodge in and out of runners. So you have to be a little bit um, of careful uh, with that. My eighth tip is uh, just a, a tip about if you decide you ultimately want to go faster, or uh, perhaps this tip is really about sort of pacing, okay? My tip really for you, if you do decide that you want to go faster, to make sure you do it at the right time. And what I mean by that is what you should really be thinking at the very beginning of the race, you should be thinking about the tortoise as opposed to the hare. So your first mile itself should be the slowest mile of your race. Your inclination at that point is going to be to try and go out as fast as you can. Your adrenaline will be pumping. It'll be exciting that you're with the crowd. They'll probably be playing music and that sort of thing. But you really have to resist that urge and uh, try and keep your pace under control. And again, make that the slowest mile of your race. As you progress on, especially as you start getting like between miles two and six, if you feel pretty good at that point, your idea really there should be to try and maintain your pace. And again, as I mentioned before, you should be testing your pace through your training. So you should have some idea going into the race itself what kind of pace that you're going to establish. So during those miles two to six, you should really be trying to maintain that pace overall and keep that um, consistent, all right? As you start getting miles six and eight, and if you're feeling pretty good at that point, you should start thinking about, okay, I'm gonna push things a little bit. Maybe I'll increase my pace a little bit here, okay? So you might be increasing your pace by five to 10 seconds um, or, 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 or something, something per, per mile, like a short uh, little amount to just uh, boost you along a little bit. If you're just sort of feeling okay at that point, then just try and keep your, your pace steady. All right, and then again, as you start getting towards mile eight, nine, and ten, this is the time where if you're feeling good, you can really start start pushing. All right. The tip that I really have about the Broad Street Run too is it's a little hard to see exactly where the finish line is, so really pay close attention to the mile markers that will be along the side of the path itself. As you get down towards the stadiums and stuff, you'll start hearing the theme from Rocky, and many people start thinking at that point that boy, I must be close to the finish you are still a ways away from the finish at that point. So don't get caught up in the Rocky music and think, okay, I'm going to start sprinting at this point because you will run out of gas before you get to the, get to the finish line, okay? Uh, the finish line is actually in the Navy Yard itself. So as you start seeing signs for the Navy Yard, that is your time to really start pushing uh, for the finish itself, okay? As you're pushing towards the finish, make sure you use your arms, swing your arms a little bit more. That'll get your legs going a little bit faster. Really concentrate, about your, really concentrate on your turnover, getting your legs to turn uh, faster and to ultimately uh, finish strong. My ninth tip is, is really about enjoying the race overall. I, there's no statistics that I could find about the percentage of people that actually run a 10 mile race, but about 0.6% of people actually run a half marathon. So if you equate that to like a 10 mile race, it's probably just a little bit more than that, but it's really not a lot of people. Okay, so the one thing you should feel really good about is that you ran a 10 mile race. There just aren't very, very many people who do that overall. The other thing that I would say during the race itself is enjoy the scenery. So enjoy the people that are lining the um, race um, path as you're running along. There'll be people out there that are cheering, that'll be shouting your name and stuff. Really, really enjoy that. 
The interesting thing about all races too is that people tend to bring signs with them and some of these signs are really, really funny. So make sure you, you take a moment to look at those and to read them and use the humor in them to help kind of fuel you along as um, you run. And the biggest thing about the race is just really rejoice in your fitness. Running 10 miles is not an easy feat at all. So you should really feel good about yourself and feel good about that accomplishment overall. All right. And then my last tip for you is relative just to recovery, which is a very important part of the race itself. So don't forget you did all this training to get in the race, you ran the race, and then it's important to recover after the race itself, okay? And there's a couple tips that I can, can give to you uh, about that. One of the most important things is to make sure you keep moving after the race itself. Don't run the race and then go sit in a beer garden or at home on your couch and that sort of thing and not do any activity at all. Try and at least keep moving. That'll keep your muscles loose, keep blood flowing, that sort of thing, and ultimately will help with your recovery. You might think about doing an ice bath too, which sounds horrible and uh, is pretty much horrible when you do it, but it is really helpful to the recovery overall. Essentially what an ice bath is, is that um, you fill a bathtub up with water. Generally what I do is I'll fill it up with somewhat warm water to begin with, actually get into the bath itself and have ice available to you there, and then you want to pour ice into the water to make it colder as you sit there, okay? The objective here is to get the water temperature to about 54 to 60 degrees in or so, which is, is pretty cold, and to sit in there for about 10 to 12 minutes or so. And what this does is help decrease the inflammation in your legs itself and will ultimately make your recovery um, better, all right? A trick uh, that I use when I do an ice bath is to drink something warm while you're in the ice bath, so have coffee or or hot tea or hot cocoa or something like that, or perhaps soup, something like that, that'll help take your mind off the uh, cold water that you're sitting in. A couple other uh, suggestions around recovery is light stretching in the days after the race is sometimes helpful too. So nothing real, real vigorous, just light stretching to try and loosen up your muscles. Most people will ask us, how quickly can I exercise after the race itself? And that's somewhat dependent upon what your fitness level overall is. If you're an experienced runner who runs races regularly that are longer than 10 miles, then oftentimes you'll be able to start exercise and start running pretty quickly after the 10 mile race itself. But if the 10 mile race, this Broad Street is perhaps your first race of that length, or you don't regularly do these things, I recommend that you take a few days off from strength training and even running so that it gives your body time to recover. So if the race is on Sunday, in that case, you may decide not to run until Wednesday or Thursday of the week. And that run at that point will be at a slower pace and it'll be for a fairly short distance. So it might only be for three or four miles just to try and loosen things up, okay? And you may maintain that for the next two to three weeks, that shorter distance, slower pace, until you really start feeling like you've recovered from the race itself. There's a rule of thumb in the running world that says basically for every mile you uh, race, you really should be resting for a day. So for a 10 mile race, you should be re really resting for a full 10 days, which doesn't necessarily mean you don't do anything during those days, but you shouldn't be back to your regular activity level, all right? So my last tip for you, and I realize this is tip number 11, and I promised to only give you 10, but uh, if you do need help with any of your running needs, whether that's because you're injured or you're just looking to try and become a more efficient runner, we're happy to see you here at the Running Performance and Research Center at Drexel University. So please give us a call at 215-553-7012 and we'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.